Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. The COVID-19 wave continues to sweep across India, even as states impose fresh restrictions and localized lockdowns. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said the government has no plans of imposing countrywide lockdowns, as that will hurt the economy. To discuss the impact on business, I have with me members of India in Bithya Garajan, uh, Chairman of CII's Western Region and Managing Director of Blue Star, Rakesh Sharma, the Executive Director at Bajaj Auto, Niranjan Hiranandani, the co-founder and MD of the Hiranandani Group, Ashish Bhandari, the Managing Director and CEO of Thermax. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Mr. Tyagarajan, uh, we saw the Chief Minister of Maharashtra announce restrictions last night. There is a fairly detailed circular that was also issued uh, by the government on what qualifies as essential, what qualifies as non-essential. On a plain reading of what has been implemented by the government, how easy is it likely to be for businesses to continue to operate? Uh, good afternoon, Sri. Uh, thank you for having me in your show. Um, the, uh, it is somewhat painful, but we are uh, in agreement with the government uh, because there were extensive consultations. Uh, on uh, April 4th, the uh, Chief Minister himself spent more than an hour interacting with us, and he had discussed with all the stakeholders. Given the situation that is prevailing in Mumbai and rest of Maharashtra, I think these measures are essential. And I'm only hoping that by following this strictly, we will be in a much better position by May first week. Your, uh, your, you believe that this is going to be painful, but this is, uh, uh, this is perhaps what is needed at this hour. Uh, but Mr. Tyagarajan, if I could just extend that now to the specific restrictions that have been announced. Uh, you know, for instance, that uh, you will need to house workers on premises and so on and so forth. How doable is that? And while it might be doable for the large companies, will that really be possible for the smaller company universe, the SMEs, the tier two, tier three suppliers? Uh, for the uh, past five days, Shireen, where we had discussed this, we had placed a certain request. We had asked them that we will do 100% uh, RT-PCR test or the antigen test. We, the workers are safe inside the manufacturing premises rather than sitting at home under lockdown conditions. I think uh, they, they are, they are, the healthcare system is breaking down. So you, you watched the speech, I suppose. It, it is a real stress on the healthcare infrastructure yeah. out here. Yeah, very all, other person seems to be infected. And I think uh, we, if we cooperate and uh, whether this one, it is painful. Uh, I agree with you. That is some amount of business will be lost. Yeah. But at the same time, going by our experience last year, we are hopeful that this will be made up. Hmm. I, I, I think we all bounced back uh, yeah. in a very big way. So the other sector, actually, Mr. Hiranandani will deal with that. We had also requested that the construction work should never come to a standstill there. On that subject, he will deal with. Hmm. So it hmm. is painful, but I hmm. do not think the government had any other option. Eventually, we have accepted that we will cooperate and ensure yeah. that we are out of this phase by May first week. I, I'm uh, fairly confident that we will be in a much better position post April 30th. Well, that certainly is the hope at this point in time. And you're right in pointing out that the hospital infrastructure is stretched beyond capacity across the state of Maharashtra and in other states as well. But Mr. Hiranandani, to the point that was being made there by Mr. Tyagarajan, let me uh, uh, address that issue with you. Uh, you know, what is this now going to mean as far as the construction and the real estate sector is concerned, especially when we talk about migrant labor? We've already started to see the return of migrant labor scenes being revisited from last year. Uh, how concerned are you and, uh, uh, you know, what should we expect on this front? Uh, so the problem has been addressed. I think the chief minister has said very categorically, that those construction workers which are there on the sites or they're in the factory premises or adjoining the factory premises and they are taken care of, uh, there will be no reverse migration. So uh, as of my information today, construction workers have not been, there is no reverse migration yet of the construction workers. But uh, of the other sectors, which is relating to hospitality, 
those are relating to other trades which have taken which is totally the shops have been totally mm. closed down those workers are actually started mm. going back mm. but fortunately construction workers have not started moving back in maybe small number but that usually happens during this season because they go back for the farming uh, for the kshetri uh, and in their residential area so shirin what has happened is in reality mm. the construction site is well taken care of as compared to what it was last year number one number two uh, what is worrying me is actually more than that is the inavailability of adequate vaccination and shirin i think last year we never had a single vaccine here today we supply vaccines to the whole world but we do not have vaccines for ourselves mm. i think this is a failure and i think somewhere down the line if we had vaccinated more people today this problem would not have taken place so i think there's a failure of vaccination mm. number 3 that as far as the hospital situation is concerned we are in dire states i also run a hospital and i have no beds either in the icu or availability for additional bed or patient but for other hospitals they don't have oxygen and they are not getting mm. adequate medicines for themselves Yeah. So I think what has happened is that the chief minister, yeah. with his hand at the back, had no option but to take this short, uh, what should I say, uh, a, a, a kind of a partial lockdown, which has happened over here, subject to many conditions yeah. and other things, which he has been liberal about. And remember, one bigger thing, Sha, uh, uh, Shireen, is the fact that the trains and buses are still subject to certain restrictions. still yeah. moving which in mumbai correct is the is the yes. blood uh, storm without the uh, trains and the buses it doesn't work so i think they have kind of uh, moderated the lockdown now as compared to earlier yes absolutely in fact uh, you know i think we use this term very loosely but the lockdown in comparison to what it meant last year this time and what is happening on the ground this time uh, is very very different and you're right in pointing out that there are many relaxations in place but mr hiranandani i just wanted to get a quick clarification from you because you said that uh, construction workers if housed on premises uh, the activity will be allowed to continue now how many uh, projects will have that ability to be able to do so sir uh, do you believe that there is likely to be minimal disruption or do you believe there could be significant disruption so the projects which may be city centric right in downtown city probably will be difficulty but suburban extended suburb and outside the, the city side which consists of 95% of all the construction work in mumbai region for example will continue so i think there won't be any there may be some slow down obviously there will be but actually it won't disrupt it completely and there will be no pressure on those so about 90% of the project will remember one more thing shirin i'm let me add there are huge projects construction projects of the government which is ongoing in mumbai the coastal road uh, which is there the metro 300 kilometers of metro is going on the cross harbor bridge is going on the mumbai yeah. nagpur expressway is going on yeah. uh, these are huge numbers almost i would say 1 lakh workers mm. if you combine all these projects put together so that's another huge number mm. which will be ongoing so i would say 90% uh, construction yes. work will go on 10% will definitely stop well uh, i guess that's uh, par for the course given the current situation but uh, let me bring rakesh uh, sharma into the conversation rakesh uh, you know many lessons and learnings from uh, how companies have been able to deal with the pandemic over the past year and i would imagine that that playbook is being utilized as of today as well uh, take me through what you've been able to do overnight to ensure that there is minimal disruption uh, of operations well shri you're right the last time on uh, we were all scrambling to manage the uh, operations and there have been a lot of lessons learned and and i would say if there is any uh, shining star from the whole experience uh, of last year it's the resilience uh, and agility of the supply chains you know which managed to uh, make sure that the rebound was uh, serviced 
so this time around, uh, there is a lot of dialogue. There is all uh, between the local administration, between the deeper parts of the supply chain, uh, and that playbook is there. It does impose uh, certain restrictions. The um, uh, slew of measures which were announced uh, last year, but uh, speaking just for Bajaj Auto being uh, heavily export oriented, uh, we are able to at this point of time. Yeah. Uh, uh, managed to keep our operations going. And fortunately, uh, the transport systems and the port and custom systems are still running. We have not seen the kind of uh, departure of drivers, etc., cetera, from um, uh, the transport companies this year, because even the transport companies have been a bit proactive in terms of taking care of food and shelter and reassurances. So uh, the wheel is uh, moving. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, as you point out, the wheel is moving. Uh, and uh, you're right, uh, the uh, government restrictions do not impose any conditions on exports. All imports and exports of all commodities can continue as is. But Rakesh, just on the agility and resilience of the supply chain, uh, you know, do you believe that uh, at least for the next few days there could be some hiccup, some stumbling blocks there? Or do you believe that they have also been able to uh, transition uh, to the new restrictions? Yeah, you know, in the auto sector, uh, the supply chain is multi-level. It's a bit deep and uh, I'm not uh, ruling out the possibility that uh, second level vendors or third level vendors will not face issues, but uh, they may. But uh, I think the, the, the stance uh, in the administration is one is an accommodating stance. It is not uh, uh, a zero yeah. one uh, situation. So I think with a little bit of dialogue, local uh, resolution, which will be required, will require investment of uh, management time and effort, but it can be overcome. And I think we should be able to uh, see through the next uh, two weeks without an issue. I think that's an important point that you make. Uh, and the chief minister made that clear in his speech yesterday. Uh, he said very clearly that he doesn't want a lockdown, but this is a decision that has been forced uh, on the administration because of the shortages uh, that the state is faced with. So I would imagine that this stakeholder consultation process will continue and some of the issues uh, uh, that are likely to crop up may be addressed at the local level. Ashish Bhandari, uh, let me bring you in. Uh, Ashish, uh, uh, you know, wheels uh, continue to turn and you believe that you will be able to continue with operations as is? Shireen, a very good afternoon to you and to the uh, my co-panelists that are on the call as well. Uh, I would agree with what my co-panelists have said. The announcements could have been much worse than what they ended up uh, coming out as. And as it allows us some room for consultation to make sure that all our plants continue to operate. We operate five plants in the state of Maharashtra, uh, all across, two in the heart of Pune. Uh, I do think operations will be affected and the effect will be driven a, by availability of labor. For example, as we go through testing, we are finding that uh, that people that we have within our uh, people that may be asymptomatic, et cetera, we do have cases. Yeah? So as you isolate, do you do uh, contact tracing? A good population or a percentage of population mm. is at risk of not being available for work. The second big concern that we have is availability of oxygen supply. Uh, which today we have only four days of oxygen supply left uh, um, and we are looking forward to seeing how we will get new supply because without oxygen then the entire welding process, fabrication process gets affected. Third, as far as labor is concerned, uh, mm -hmm. migrant labor in particular, uh, right now there is no shortage uh, of labor, but uh, the signaling from the lockdowns is important. We have to continue to let everyone in the ecosystem know, not just us and our direct suppliers, even the sub-suppliers know that there is enough orders. We do expect to make sure that the plants uh, continue to operate because what we remember is the migrant mm. labor did not leave in the first cycle last year. They left in the second and the third lockdowns. Yeah. Um, so the signaling that we do right now is extremely, yes. extremely important. Uh, bottom line, I do think we will be able to continue our operations. Uh, I do think they will be affected by anywhere from 10 to 20 percent, uh, which post May, just like Tyagrajan said, we do expect things to be better. 
can we make up that slack in the next two months remains to be seen. Uh, and right now, as things stand, things are difficult, but not as bad as they could have been. Yes, uh, not as bad as uh, was anticipated. But Rakesh, uh, I want to come back to you on the point that was made there by Ashish on the shortages of oxygen. And this is something that uh, the chief minister also spoke of uh, both at the medical level and perhaps now at an industrial level. This is going to be a big challenge. Uh, they've asked uh, the central government for assistance in augmenting the supply of oxygen. Uh, how big a challenge is this likely to be for a company like yours, uh, Rakesh? And how do you mitigate this risk? Well, you know, uh, Shirin, uh, there is a much larger issue. At we are a very small uh, uh, component in that, and it's not that uh, our requirements are huge. But from whatever I can understand, of course, it's a serious issue, and uh, we are a very, very small uh, factor in this. Yes, of course, at this point in time, augmenting oxygen supplies to the healthcare system is uh, going to be the number one priority for the state government, and they have sought the assistance of the center uh, to do the same. Mr. Thyagarajan, on that point, uh, you know, whether it is RT PCR tests or ensuring that uh, employees get vaccinated now, on site vaccinations allowed for those who are eligible 45 years and above, you know, what measures is industry taking uh, to perhaps augment the effort? of the local administration uh, to ensure that things get back on track sooner uh, rather than later? Uh, thank you, Shirin. I, at the behest of the Chief Minister, we, uh, we have formed a WhatsApp group. Uh, the CII um, senior members as well as the industry captains, Chief Secretary and many government officials are part of that group. So there is 24 by 7 consultations are going on. We are very happy for every query that is placed. Round the clock, we are getting the response from the chief secretary or other officials. We have promised that we will make available oxygen to the healthcare sector. We will reduce our consumption. We will make available. If people producing oxygen have offered to make available ventilators, Companies have come forward to donate or step up the production. The things like vaccination, we have said we will be happy to provide vaccination for our employees at the workplace. We are ready to pay for it. And uh, at this juncture, it is absolutely important for us to cooperate with the government. And these 15 days are very crucial. If we do that, I am very, very certain, as I told you, we will be better off. There are, there are enough indicators that if we will be able to contain this. So therefore, the government has got a full commitment from the industry in whatever form they want us to help them, mm -hmm. we are ready to do that. Well, yes, uh, and all stakeholders and all hands will need to be on deck to ensure uh, that this happens. But Mr. Hiranandani, you know, to the point that you were making on the hospital infrastructure being stretched uh, to capacity at this point in time, just yesterday, the BMC commissioner in his conversation with me said that they are now going to invite expressions of interest from large private hospitals to actually manage the new jumbo facilities that are expected to come up in Mumbai over the next four weeks. Uh, hotels, uh, to start with, two five-star hotels are also going to be uh, put into operation and managed by hospitals to ensure that those who don't require regular hospitalization can avail of these facilities. Uh, you know, uh, what's the industry feedback on being able to partner with the government on this front? We, uh, we are all, Shirin, we are already partnering with the government and the local administration, including the municipal commissioner. But you have to understand, uh, Shirin, it's uh, very easy to improve the physical infrastructure add beds, add mattresses, add uh, equipment, get everything else, and maybe over a period of time also the oxygen. But it's not so easy to get doctors and nurses of adequate uh, uh, qualification yeah. and competency to manage uh, extensively these things. And remember, our doctors and nurses have been working for the last one year with huge stress in these PPEs and requiring to be done. They are getting tired. And it's very, very difficult to expand capacity rapidly uh, with uh, this situation as it is. But it's a warlike situation. We are fully cooperating with the government. 
we support them we are trying to see that whatever is the extent to which we can lend uh, uh, do and help and support and manage whatever other facilities of the government we are also extending our help to do so but there are limitations and you can't go behind it that's why this partial lockdown to find out if we can really reduce the pace of this thing and bring it back to normal wherein we will have the physical capacity to manage it but shirin if you don't vaccinate this will continue to come back so the question is not only how you're managing it today why is this vaccination not happening and why are we not questioning that that why has that not happened the rest of the world is gone fast we have all the infrastructure in our country we have it in pune we have it in hyderabad and we have it here why the heavens yes. can't we speed up that and vaccinate the entire country otherwise you'll have a third and a fourth and a fifth and we will still be struggling again and again so yeah. i'm not in agreement only with the fact of the partial lockdown the focus is not only on oxygen should be yeah. which it should be of course at this moment but the long term issue is vaccinate everybody mm -hmm. about 2025 today i'm getting 42 year old people who are yeah. dying they're dead so how long can we tolerate this you have to vaccinate these people and get it done this is the only and we haven't had a single case of person vaccinated and died so we have a good uh, uh, background of the situation that vaccination at least is not is definitely help in reducing mortality so i think while talking about everything yes. else you shirin you have to mention all the time about vaccination and question the fact that we don't have adequate numbers today I, I just did, sir. I, I was I was having the exact same conversation with the principal scientific advisor Vijay Raghavan just a short while ago, uh, and he believes that post July we should be able to see a ramping up of availability. And you're right in pointing out it is not a switch that you can turn off and on. It will take time. If a, if a Sputnik vaccine has been given an approval, it will take time before it actually is made available in the market. So uh, you know that that uh, point is well taken. But Rakesh uh, uh, and Ashish, let me end by. asking the two of you you know we've spent uh, most of our time here talking about what's happening in the state of maharashtra but the epidemic is raging outside of the state of maharashtra as well uh, what is the indication that you're getting from other states at this point in time in terms of uh, impact on business rakesh well shree that is actually the bigger and more important question because you know the lockdowns uh, will come and go and uh, uh, they will have their impact but really what is happening right across the country is uh, uh, that uh, the pandemic is raging there are many many parts of the country where uh, you have uh, physical lockdowns or where the economic uh, revival has halted in its track and consumer sentiment is getting hit hard for uh, you know a company like ours which engages with the mass segment um, <clears throat> we are seeing a decline uh, in business in the first half of april uh, compared to a same period let's say in march there's no point comparing with last year because we were already into uh, the lockdown but <clears throat> you know the recovery which was at any point of time we were saying the recovery is fragile but uh, december jan feb when it was uh, sort of coming back march uh, towards the end it has started to slow down and in the first half of april till today we are now seeing there is a serious decline in retails right across uh, the country over uh, march so i think uh, even if there was no lockdown let's say and there are many uh, cities and uh, play, uh, towns where there is no lockdown but the footfalls in the showroom the uh, level of business has certainly yeah. got muted so that actually is the much larger question to uh, address and you know try to get the economy uh, and uh, the livelihood of people uh, back on track absolutely uh, ashish uh, same question to you uh, uh, what 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 are you hearing uh, from other states uh, shireen in the other states where we have plants and factories and even on the demand side maharashtra is clearly the worst affected but that does not mean that the other plants in the other states will not have the same condition in the future yeah um, so we have to be prepared the 
the new version of the virus is very contagious and what we are seeing in Maharashtra could very well be as we are seeing De Delhi go through. But tomorrow it could be Gujarat, could be Andhra Pradesh, some of the other places where we have significant uh, operations. So we are making sure that the same advanced uh, safety procedures, etc., that we have in plain Maharashtra are all ready to go in the other states mm. as well. Most importantly, making sure that our 45 plus people that are vaccinated, that are open for vaccinations, they are vaccinated as soon as possible. So we are tracking right down to the individual level, making sure we are talking to the unions, we're talking to their families, making sure that everyone in our ecosystem that is 45 plus, in Maharashtra, we have run out of vaccines, but we did a great uh, five-day run where we were able to hold two big vaccination camps and vaccinate hundreds of our employees as part of those camps. We are looking to repeat those in other places where we have operations, not waiting for the pandemic to get worse and get ahead of the yeah. curve um, in this pandemic. Well, that, uh, gentlemen, is the big hope. Uh, and there are many moving parts at this point in time. But let's hope uh, that things uh, stabilize and we do see a reduction, a decline in the number of cases uh, by the end of the month, which is the expectation of the government. As we speak, a decision taken now for parents who are watching this program and for the young kids who are getting ready to uh, appear for their class 10 and 12 examinations, at least as far as class 12 exams are concerned, the CBSE board examination stand postponed. That is the decision of the government. And as far as the board examinations for class 10 are concerned, they have been cancelled. So parents and students who were busy preparing for the board examinations, this is the news that's coming in. Uh, Bhiti Agarajan, Rakesh Sharma, Niranjan Hiranandani and Ashish Bhandari, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 to talk about the impact of uh, the current second wave as well as the restrictions imposed by many states appreciate your time we'll take a break there's a lot more coming up don't go anywhere we're back in a moment